I wanted to make this video to explain the in-class problems we had today on August 31st because we didn't have time to go over them in detail in class. In the first problem, we're looking at identifying what are the acids and bases on each side of the equation. When we use the term conjugate acid and base, it's usually referring to the products of an acid-base reaction. So an acid will produce a conjugate base, and a base would produce a conjugate acid. Often, those terminology are used to refer to the reaction depending on which way the equilibrium goes. So it's the product side of the reaction. We can talk about it just speaking of the right side of the reaction as long as we know that we're talking relative to what was the acid that produced which conjugate base. So in this case, I'm simply going to write on each side what are the acids, what are the bases, and explain why the equilibrium lies the way it does. So for this first problem, ethanol is reacting with sodium hydroxide. So we have an OH neutral molecule, and we have NaOH, a negatively charged molecule. And that will produce sodium ethoxide and water. So obviously this would be the acid in the reaction, ethanol. Sodium hydroxide would be the base. After the reaction, the base will pick up a proton and become water. So that becomes the conjugate acid. Notice base becomes the acid the acid will become the conjugate base. Now, in fact, this is a difficult problem to tell which side the equilibrium lies on because methanol, ethanol, water, they all have very similar pKa's. And without knowing specifically the pKa, I wouldn't expect you to know the direction of the equilibrium for this particular problem because there are no obvious structural differences that you would be able to pick out at this point. What I can say is that water is slightly more acidic than ethanol as the acids go, and so this should shift just slightly to the left side of the equation. But don't worry if you couldn't get this first one. I'm not concerned about that. In part B, we have a carboxylic acid functional group here, propionic acid. This is the acid in the reaction. This is reacting with a very, very strong base, which happens to be an alkyl lithium or a methyl lithium. This is a carbon minus with a lithium plus. And so a negatively charged carbon is a very, very strong base. That will pick up a proton and become methane in the product. So the base becomes the acid and then the acid will become the base, the lithium carboxylate salt. In this reaction, the acid strength is clearly very, very, very low for methane. It's essentially not acidic and so comparing to the carboxylic acid on the left, this reaction will lie towards the side of the more stable, less reactive species, or to the right. In part C, we have an alcohol functional group and an NH minus functional group. The one with the negative charge should be identified as the base, the OH as the acid. The conjugates of those, the acid will become the alkoxide here, that's the base on the right side, and the acid on the right side is the NH2, the species which has picked up the proton. Now the equilibrium will lie far to the right because of the difference in electronegativity. Nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen. We can look at this in terms of the base strengths on either side or if you know the pKa's you could look at the pKa difference but I was hoping the, the base stability on each side would be an indicator as to which side would be the more stable products. The following reaction we have NH4 plus reacting with a carboxylate anion. This would be the acid since it has a plus charge and hydrogens. This would be the base as it has a negative charge. NH3 on the right would be the conjugate base because ammonium has given up the proton. Acid would become the base and base becomes the acid, it picked up the proton. Now in terms of the equilibrium, I wouldn't expect you to know the pKa's for this one either, so this might be really tricky for you. It actually turns out that ammonium is a weaker acid than carboxylic acid, so actually the equilibrium lies to the left. But given the fact that what you probably would look at is that we have charged species on the left side and neutral species on the right, you might predict that the reaction would lie to the right. But in fact, ammonia is a very strong base relative to the carboxylate which is delocalized, and that's not obvious, but ammonium is a really weak acid. So this is actually a salt, which is very stable. If you predicted this would go to the right, don't worry. I wouldn't expect you to know all of those details at this point. This was a very challenging question. In problem two of this assignment, I asked you to look at the molecules shown below and tell me where the most acidic hydrogens are on those molecules. In, in essence, what is the acid? Where would the hydrogen most likely come off? So if each of these reacted as an acid, anything that's attached to a heteroatom, an oxygen, nitrogen, something that's not a carbon, would certainly be more acidic than something attached to a carbon in most cases. So hopefully it's obvious, sulfuric acid, 
there's only these hydrogens. That would be the most acidic hydrogens. In methylamine, the hydrogens attached to carbon are very, very strongly bonded. It's the hydrogens on nitrogen, which could only act as an acid. The OH is the acidic protons on phenol. The OH on that alcohol is the acidic proton. The OH of the carboxylic acid is obviously the most acidic proton. This one is a little bit more tricky. We have two OHs, and one of those is more acidic than the other, and it actually turns out that the OH that's closest to the electron withdrawing groups will be the more acidic one because those are withdrawing electron density, making that hydrogen more reactive. In other words, the negative charge that would be formed if you take that off is more stabilized being closer to the electronegative groups. This hydrogen would be more acidic, easier to come off than the hydrogen on the other end. Now in this case, there's no hydrogens on any heteroatoms, only on carbons, and they actually happen to be all equivalent since we have CH3s on both sides. Any one of those are exactly equivalent, so that's the obvious most acidic hydrogen. It's the only kind we have. Now let's take a look at the second part of this question, that is, which of these would be more acidic than water and which would be less acidic than water. So think about the structure of water. The question was trying to get you to think about how structure affects the reactivity and the acidity. So if we think about water attached to an OH, would that be more or less acidic? We had talked about electronegativity effects before. So NH2, nitrogen, is less electronegative than water. So this will be less acidic. Than water, the negative charge that would be generated would be very unstable. Phenol, if you generate a negative charge by removing the proton, would be stabilized by resonance, whereas water is not stabilized by resonance, so this would be more acidic than water, easier to come off. Sulfuric acid, very strong acid. Actually, the structure of sulfuric acid is this, and when you generate the negative charge again, it will form resonance structures and spread out, so sulfuric acid would be more acidic than water. Hydrogens on carbon definitely are going to be less acidic than water, much harder to pull off. With the electron withdrawing groups, this OH is going to be more acidic than water. Carboxylic acid, again, resonance will spread out. It'll be more acidic than water. We take a look at this one. The, the question is whether that alcohol will be more or less acidic than water. And because of all these carbons in this molecule, these are actually a little bit electron donating groups. So this is actually less acidic than water. That might be very tricky for you to know without having PKAs as well. Uh, so if you didn't get that one, don't worry. But just to let you know, carbon groups, alkyl groups, are electron donating. That has the opposite effect of electron withdrawing groups. So this would be less acidic than H2O. In the last problem, I wanted you to think about how the acidity is affected by resonance and electron withdrawing groups. These are very similar molecules with the difference being that the electron withdrawing group, the nitro group, is placed in a different position around the ring. And depending on how the resonance forms contribute to the structure, you can see that the deprotonation of 3-nitrophenol would be easier than 2-nitrophenol. We can explain this by looking at the product of the acid-base reaction. We can think about this by analyzing all of the resonance forms, and I'm just going to draw these out for you to show you all four resonance forms for this structure. What you can see from these four structures is that the negative charge exists in four different locations around this molecule, on the oxygen, at that carbon, at that carbon, and at that carbon. Notice it skips the carbon that the NO2 is attached to. If we compare that directly with the resonance forms for the 3-nitrophenol, what we see is that the negative charge is still in the same positions around the ring. The only thing that's changed is the position of the NO2. And in this particular one, we have the negative charge directly next to the NO2, which is a strong electron withdrawing group. So that one is especially more stabilized among these than any of the resonance structures formed. So what that means is that the structure generated from deprotonation of 3-nitrophenol will be more stable overall than that generated from 2-nitrophenol. So the actual uh, pKa difference can be explained by the fact that you get greater stabilization of the negative charge. And thus, this hydrogen of 3-nitrophenol will be more acidic.